we should support each other and, and, and find ways to, to move forward and, and not with everybody, not work with everybody, just just keep the eyes forward and, and not get too distracted. Alright, so this is the next video in a um, uh, video series, I suppose I could call it Rolling Revolution? Rolling Revolutions? Revelations? Revelation sounds a bit religious. Um, anyway, in the next 10 minutes, I'm going to share four ways in which I think we are commonly missing the mark when it comes to our animal advocacy. Um, the first is an overemphasis on treatment versus use. I think that there's numerous examples. If you're not familiar with what I'm talking about, let me know in the comments. I'm happy to go further. Um, I don't want to go too deep on this one, but I think especially when it comes to our language, which would be my second point, is to, to, to not ignore our language because basically every language, every language, every word um, in our diction, in our dictionary was written by speciesists. So it's quite likely that, especially when our fellow animals are referenced, even if it seems, seems um, insignificant, it's oftentimes very significant and um, perpetuates uh, discrimination and domination of human apes over our fellow animals. And, and, and we can't stop that until we address our language. So, but yeah, I mean, treatment, I mean, if we're, we're talking about conditions and, and, and language examples, you know, cruelty, abuse, suffering, all these things, footage, is it actually showing them as individuals um, and, 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 and building that case? Or is it just showing this awful, you know, cruelty? And it is cruelty. When I say put that in quotes, it's to emphasize it, not to say it's not cruelty. But what message are we sending with that? You know, as animal advocates, I think we'd like to think like, oh yeah, a person on the street's just gonna think, oh, that's horrible, go vegan. That's not always the case. A lot of people, and I did this myself, I'm ashamed to say, a lot of people, oh, that's horrible, let's reduce. Oh, that's horrible. I'll buy humane fill in the blank. Oh, that's horrible. You know, and, and any other number of potential variations, but not veganism. So, I think it, it's really important with this stuff that we, we stay focused, as I'm trying to do with this video. So, treatment versus use. Do not ignore our language. I got a whole language document. I just, an, a month or so ago, on my website, spent a lot of time updating. I do this a couple times a year if I can. Join the anti-speciesist, or unlearning speciesist uh, language group on Facebook. Um, but yeah, and that document I did is a huge dump of just 30 pages of my ideas over the years of how I think we can improve our language. But also join that group because that's, you know, you get nudges in your, your, your feed or however you choose to engage with the group. I actually have it as a startup tab because that's how I choose to interact with um, social media um, versus just seeing what the algorithm wants to feed me. I go specifically to the destination, in this case the language group, to see what the latest posts are and what people's ideas are around that. Oh, um, so that's two ideas. I think a third idea, which I just did a video about, um, which so this one will probably be about a week after that one releases. Don't get drawn into the human-centric drama. It's human nature. I mean, I'm driving right now. It's human nature to, if there's a car wreck, to just look. But it's not safe. Keep your keep your head forward on on, on, on the task at hand because we've we've got a lot of work to do. I think we all know that as animal advocates, and and, and I think a lot of us even doubt if if, if we're going to be successful with population growth and the rest of it. But that doesn't change our job. We still have to keep doing what we're doing. So really staying focused, and, and I'm not saying don't have discussions within the movement. I think community building is very important. But the question is, is it respectful and is it solution based? Because remember, at the end of the day, they're animal advocates just like you or I, and we all have different opinions on a myriad of different things. And some of those can be quite challenging to, to, to navigate, and we don't have to work with everyone. But I think what we do need to do is foster a movement that moves. I don't think we're moving. I, I, I don't want to be this armchair outside looking in or anything. I mean, I very much consider myself a part of the movement. I'm, I'm doing what I can to try to move things forward as well as I'm guessing everyone sitting there watching right now is also doing this, trying to move things forward. But we, we, we can't do that if we're just having conversations with ourselves and we're not actually out there actively campaigning. 
so treatment versus use, unlearning the speciesist language and coming up with anti-speciesist alternatives. Don't get drawn in to the human-centric distractions um, and, and let it dominate your time. Because conversations are still important, but they shouldn't be dominating our time. But the fourth and final point I'd like to cover in this video is take care of yourselves. I've still got a few minutes before I hit that 10 minute mark with the arbitrary um, time that I'm going to try to keep these in to, to make them a bit more digestible, but I struggle with self care. Um, I mean, mental health is a huge topic on its own, and I think my animal advocacy has been such a struggle and beautiful thing at the same time. And, I mean, it's, it's, it's shaped who I am as a person, and that's great, but it's also, you know, been deeply saddening the secondary trauma that we experience on a myriad of different levels from, you know, firsthand witnessing animal atrocities and moral atrocities towards our fellow animals to even secondhand, you know, seeing a post on social media and for myself editing footage, which I only try to do when it's absolutely necessary. Sorry, I've just got to slow down a little bit so I don't cause an accident. Oh, shiza. That is a definite hazard. Just reporting my ways. Vehicle stopped on side of road hazard because that, that could be dangerous. And there's an example right there of People are slowing down way too much there, largely because they want to see what's going on and nearly causing an accident. And I think that's what we're doing in the animal movement. We're slowing down too much to look at all this, these tra train wrecks happening because human apes, were flawed individuals. You know, we're I inevitably gonna have our downfalls, you know, hopefully more minor than major, but we, we should support each other and, and, and find ways to, to move forward and, and not with everybody, not work with everybody, just, just, keep the eyes forward and, and not get too distracted and, and a big part of that is, is, is building that relationship with ourselves back to this fourth point and, and it's such a difficult thing I mean how many of you watching this now have ever just looked at yourself in the mirror and pondered who's on the other side and I know that might seem a little bit confusing but literally look yourself in the eyes just just appreciate the body you're in this this whole experience and just check in with yourself are you are you happy are you okay you know antinatalism discussion i had with brad on the live stream a few weeks back has a specific response i guess around that but you, you know we're here we might as well make the most of it that 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 brilliant shawshank redemption quote you know get busy living or get busy dying i mean i think Let's get busy living and get busy building respect for our fellow animals and ending their, their being manipulated to have children and used and murdered on, on a massive moral atro atrocity, moral deprivation scale. I've got to turn in a mile. <laughs> this is turning into, I guess it's not a trainer because I'm driving. Hopefully there's no trains around, but. I, I, I want to keep these videos fairly structured, but they are kind of a bit of a brain dump. But self-care, I, I should really do a whole video just on, on my approach to self-care. Maybe we can um, leave that for the comments, though. I mean, what do you do to take care of yourself? How often do you do it? And what do you do to make sure that you're sustainable? Because burnout's a very real thing. There's there's things that happen all around us within the movement that cause burnout. And there's, there's things we do to ourselves that cause burnout. So I'm going to do a whole other video about that, but for now I need to make this turn. So please um, keep building the respect for our fellow animals, especially through our language, and I'll see you in the next video. Oh, I can tell you're really sweet. Yeah, I know. Let's get you home, eh? You ready to go home? Alright, let's get you home then. But now that we